Hi everyone, how are we all doing today? Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with you all with yet another video and today we are going to be covering solely just brow covering. I did go through my brow cover technique in my previous video where I did a nice little drag tutorial for you all, but I thought it would be a very good idea to have all of that information over here for you all in one simple video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and press the little notification bell at the bottom if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. So let's get started. <laughs> So the way I like to prepare for covering my brows are by just removing any natural oils off my brow area. And I do that by getting a cotton pad and some clear alcohol, some IPA, and just spritzing that on the cotton pad. And then I just proceed to just giving a little cleanse to my brow area because your hairs do naturally produce oils. And you wanna get rid of those because you don't want that to interfere with how the glue is going to stick onto your brow. You don't need to worry about this being bad for your skin. It is only a tiny amount. You do want to be careful not to put too much on your cotton pad because it can make your eyes a little bit watery, but it does subside. And this is totally skin safe. Obviously, don't go rubbing all of your skin with alcohol. We do not recommend you do that. But a little bit over the brow just to wipe off any oils is perfectly fine. The glue stick that I really like to use for brow cover is the Elmer purple washable glue stick. Now there are other glue sticks in the market such as the Pritt stick which do work for creating a brow cover but I find that the best consistency and the easiest to work with is the Elmer's purple glue stick and I start by just going back and forth against the grain of the brow hair. By going against the grain I mean you want to go against the natural direction of which your brow hairs grow and as you see I am just going with the glue right now just getting every single nook and cranny of the brow once you've done that part you can grab yourself a spoolie I do not have any disposable spoolies to hand but if you do have something on like a brow pen or something like that you can use that it does come off with water just be very gentle um, I have so many brow pencils so I don't mind just kind of like getting a bit of glue on this one. Um, you can also use like, um, like a brow comb or those like lash combs that are really fine and small. Or if you have a really fine um, hair comb, like a pintail comb, that works really good as well. You can then also get your finger and just press those hairs down because the idea is you want it completely flat. And with my kind of brows, typically I would do around three to four layers because they are quite thick brows. So you do want to make sure you get them laid down with glue. Now, if you do put more layers, I would advise to go a little bit thinner with each layer, but because I do have really thick, coarse brows, I go a little bit thicker. But if your brows are slightly fairer, you might need to use less layers because you don't want there to be too much texture. Um, if you do have fairer brows, then I would recommend up to three, two to three layers um, depending on how thick you go with the glue. But this is something you can kind of measure with your eyes quite well. If you feel that it's got too much texture, I wouldn't put any more and just kind of work with that. So in between each layer, it's super important to just give a little clean outside of the brow. That's because once you apply a few layers of glue, you're gonna notice a little edge, like a barrier almost. And you wanna avoid that. And I treat this almost like as if I'm applying a silicone prosthetic to those of you who do special effects and just blending those edges, except you're blending the edges of the glue. So it's really important to allow each layer to dry. If you don't let that happen, then what's gonna happen is each layer is going to kind of stick to each other and you're gonna get one big bundle of glue stuck to your face, which you don't want. So you need to allow each layer to completely dry so you have ultimate coverage on your eyebrows. Now, you can use a hairdryer or one of those little electric fans to let it dry quicker. I just grab any old thing and just fan on the brow just to get a little bit more air onto it. If you're on set or if you're doing this for, you know, a professional job, I would just 
bring a hair dryer with you. It's so much better and easier and quicker. So I'm happy with how dry this layer is. Now we're gonna go in with layer two. So with layer two, it's super important to just go up into one direction. And layer three is going to be exactly the same as this. So I won't bore you all with doing this twice. But do bear in mind that these layers where we're going in an upwards motion are almost like the in-between layers. I like to refer to these as the sandwich filling layers because they're the two in between because the last layer is a slightly different technique. And then you wanna let that one dry as well. So now we have the third layer on, it's time to put on the last layer. And there's a different way to do this. So this is already dry, so you don't need to worry about anything beneath it being disrupted. What you want to do is you want to go in both directions like so and this is going to smooth it out and create a really really smooth finish because it's just going to fill in all of those little dips nooks and crannies that are naturally beneath where the hairs are and then you want to make sure you get some powder so i'm using the kvd beauty locket powder it's a very full coverage um, translucent powder which I love which is exactly what you want for this kind of technique and I'm going to use this really dense Fenty brush it's perfect for just pressing on any product and then when you apply the powder to the brow you want to make sure the glue is still wet and also you want to make sure you go really light to begin with the reason why you want to do that is because you don't want to move the glue at all and by going straight in really, really hard, the glue is just going to attach to the brush and it's going to go all over the place. If the glue does go slightly dry on the other brow, just apply a little bit more, just enough for it to get sticky again. And you want to get quite a generous coating of powder on each brow. Yeah, try not to breathe in too much powder. <laughs> Don't worry too much about getting it on the rest of your face. If you do have powder all over the place, just get yourself a wet wipe or a clean cotton pad with some cleanser and you can just take all of that excess powder straight off. So now you've got your base for your brows. You don't wanna be applying any more glue, nothing else like that. You wanna find yourself a foundation stick that's the closest to your skin color. So I'm going to be using the Meron Makeup Cream Blend Sticks and this is in the shade Medium 3. And this is quite close to my actual skin color. It's really, really full coverage and perfect for if you want to really get a seamless block match with your face so that you have all one color. And then you wanna just go straight on top, like so. Some people also use the Krylon TV paint sticks. Those are also really, really nice. They're a lot more fuller than these ones, but these are just a little bit smoother. The TV paint sticks are, they literally are like paint. These are more like a creamy, blendy formula, which I actually quite prefer for this type of thing. I want to use that same um, brush that I use for the powder, so I'm just going to clean it with some brush cleaner. And then it's all nice and clean, we're going to go into the foundation just so you have a little bit of product on there to give it that extra push. And that is how you block out brows. This is a super, super fun technique if you want to do drag, if you want to create some weird Halloween creature on your face, or if you just want to experiment with makeup, change your features in any way, shape or form, blocking out your brows is just a really good technique to take your makeup further. And with lots of practice, you'll be able to get a nice smooth brow block so you can go and do whatever you like with makeup. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and press the little bell button down below if you want to be in the know of when I upload a new video. Bye.